Why, hello everyone. Welcome to Redneck Ways. We're finishing up um, the USS Ronald Reagan tonight. This will be the final. I think I said that the last time, but it took a lot longer than I thought it would for the decals. Um, if you all remember in the last uh, video, I had this on backwards. So I got that fixed. I took it all back off and got it turned around the right way. Um, we got some more of our decals here. These lines. We got those on. We got all these little lines on here. Um, got these flaps up here installed. Where the jets. Um, where the, the jet engines blast. I guess it will be like blast plates. We got those glued in. Um, I had to to uh, drill a hole in the model on this because they didn't leave a divot or nothing for this little I don't know well, I guess a radar or I don't really know what this is antenna but uh, yeah I had to drill a little hole to stick that in because it kept falling off it was weird they just that's where you, they wanted you to glue it but there was there was nothing there to glue to and it would just fall over so we got that fixed. That uh, will literally just break off next time. And um, I did break one of these little antennas off up here. I've got to find it. I uh, looked everywhere. So I may have to end up trying to make one of these little things. That's a bad thing. I should have waited to put those on last. Because... When you pick up the model or whatever, they're easy to break off. But it is what it is. But also on one of our Blue Angel jets, um, put a piece of took a piece of wire. Whoops, zoomed it in too far. Took the took a piece of wire and mounted it to the plane and to the um, air carrier. And I think it gave it a good look. And I painted it flat black so it kind of blends in with the upper deck. Only thing happened that I don't like. The glue kind of made this uh, residue right in here. So I'm going to have to get that fixed. Take some uh, flat black or something to fade that in. But she's on her way. Um, tonight all we need to do, we need to put uh, these orange and yellow lines on and these broad white lines and that will be finished and also we need to put the 76 up here we gotta put the 76 on the upper deck which is let's see here it is so that's gonna go somewhere like that and uh, I've just about got all the little planes and stuff detailed here's one I did in um, desert storm colors and then I've got a few of the blue angels and there's still a couple more jets that I can try to come up with something. Um, so that's about it on the model. Um, the um, Matchbox car of the video is this Rat Fink. I mean, it is pretty cool, guys. Look at that. Um... There's an, I don't know how many of these they got out. Um, I do know the last one that they was getting ready to put out, or they did put out, they recalled it for some reason. And I haven't figured that out yet. Why? But yeah, it's pretty cool. But alrighty, guys. Um, tonight's show um, is going to be the Twilight Zone, the program. Um, 
it's going to be one of the 1960s. And uh, I've got to look up and see which one it is because I'm not for sure. So, but I do know it's going to be the Twilight Zone. So, grab you a comfy place to stretch out and relax. And uh, let's finish this up, guys. Alright guys, I'm not for sure the date of this one. I'm pretty sure it's 1950s. Or, or sorry, 1960s, I think. But, uh, the title is Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, guys. The Twilight Zone. Well, if I can get it on here. Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, starring John Schneider with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Richard Matheson. Heard in the cast were Fernet Lebo, Anne Whitney, Richard Hensel, Meg Falcon, Amber Lake, Roderick Peoples, Roger Mueller, Doug James, Tom McElroy, Jen Patterson, Kurt Nabick, and Carl Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. These uh, decals don't like sticking to this paint. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight dimension of mind you're moving into a land of both shadow and substance oh yes yeah. i don't know if you can land. see it or not you've just crossed over into oh, yes. the twilight zone but is it i got to put the ronald reagan here on the back uh, uh nurse there you are mr wilson you ready for some lunch? Oh, no, no, thanks. I, I was just... Lovely morning, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. I thought I'd wait outside. I, I was wondering... You're getting some color in your face. I am? A picture of health. Your wife will be pleased. About my wife, do you know when she's arriving? When she's... To pick me up. Oh, this is the big day? <laughs> it is, yeah, yes. Well, you'll have to check with Dr. Martin, but I'm sure it won't be long. If you'd like to say your goodbyes to the others... I'd better pack first. Oh, naturally. It's good to see you doing so well. Thank you for everything. Not at all. Oh, and nurse... Yes? If my wife should get here in the next few minutes, t tell her I'm in my room, would you, please? Of course. She's a lucky woman. <laughs> You've done wonders for myself, Steve. I don't know what I'll do without you. You'll do fine, Mr. Wilson. Just fine. I was looking for you. You you were something wrong. No, no, doctor. It's just just that plane. What about it? It's, does it always fly directly over the grounds every day on its way to the airport? Guess I never noticed. Perhaps you chose not to until you were ready. Then I guess I must be cured. You've come a long way, my boy, or I wouldn't have signed the release. I wanted to ask you, what time will Ruth be here? I believe she said half past twelve. Isn't that right? Yeah, yes, but I thought she might have been delayed if there was a last-minute change of plans. Relax. That's probably her plane now. Do you think so? Would you mind stopping by my office before you leave? I wanted to go over a few things with the both of you. Don't worry about me, Doctor. That's all behind me. Eager to get back home, I'm sure. To your job, your life. Just remember, there's no rush. One step at a time. 
You know, it's strange, but I actually feel better now than before it happened. Not strange in the least. I prefer to think of it as a kind of timeout. Something most people could use. Most people don't have nervous breakdowns. Only the best people. Oh, come on, doctor. That's very nice of you, but... I'm serious. Like a piece of fine china. The better the quality, the more likely it is to crack under stress. Oh, human beings aren't china plates, of course. Considerably more complicated. But when a bone fractures, it heals and grows back even stronger. I believe it's that way with the mind. Now that is the finest pep talk I've ever heard. I wish everyone would stop worrying about me. I never felt better in my life. Portrait of a once frightened man. Mr. Robert Wilson, 37, husband, father, and salesman. Now on the road to recovery. Mr. Wilson is ready for discharge from a sanitarium where he has spent the last six months of his life. This is the result of a nervous breakdown, the onset of which took place on a day not dissimilar to this, and on an airliner very much like the one in which Mr. Wilson is about to fly home. The difference being that on that day, half a year ago, Mr. Wilson's flight was interrupted by the onslaught of mental illness. Tonight, however, he will make it all the way to his appointed destination, which, contrary to the flight plan, happens to be a landing strip in the twilight zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, starring John Schneider, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Flight 713, now boarding at gate 12. All passengers for Flight 713, please have your boarding passes ready. That's us. Is it? I have the tickets right here. We're already checked in. All we have to do is get on the plane. Good. That's good. <laughs> um, do you suppose... What, darling? Do I have time for a drink of water? Of course. It's just down the hall. Are you feeling all right? I'm fine. I'm just thirsty. Wait, you're perspiring. It's warm in here. Aren't you warm? Bob, take it easy. Remember what the doctor said, one step at a time. I know. You've been on plenty of planes in your life. Well, haven't you? This one's no different. I take your arm and we walk on together. When we get to our seats, you'll take a nap, and when you wake up... I'm perfectly fine, really. I've got your pills. Good. They should help you sleep. Shall we? The line's getting pretty long. Honey, I said... Does this airport have a smoking area? Bob, you quit years ago. I know, I, I just thought one might help settle my stomach. It's something I ate. Try a few deep breaths. It isn't that. It, it isn't. I haven't been anywhere but the sanitarium for so long. I, I'm not used to this, the noise, the crowds. It'll be much quieter on the plane. Come on, hold my hand. Okay. Final boarding call for flight 713. All passengers, please proceed to gate 12. Please keep the aisles clear. Uh, stow all the carry-on luggage overhead or under the seat in front of you. Here we are, honey. Great. Do you need any help, sir? What? If you'd like to take your coat off. I could do it myself. She's only trying to help, Bob. I thought you were warm. Right. I'll fold it and put it in the overhead for you. Ma'am, I'll keep mine for now. Do you have any pillows up there? Uh, here you go. Thank you, stewardess. If you need anything else, you just let me know. I could use uh, something to drink. Well, I'll bring the beverage cart as soon as we're underway. Great. Did you want the window seat? You can have it. Honestly, I don't care. It's almost dark out. Besides, if I'm on the aisle, I can get up without climbing over you. Are you sure? I'm sure. I, I mean, if you are. Doesn't make any difference. I shouldn't. Enough already. I'll, I'll take the window. Oh, I didn't notice. What's the matter? We're over the wing. Miss? Yes? This row, it's the emergency exit. Would you prefer to sit somewhere else? It's okay, really. I think we would, if you don't mind. 
I'll see what I can do. The seat isn't the problem. It's, it's, it's... The fact that we're on an airplane? That shouldn't bother me either. Not if I'm a cured man. Honey. I don't act much like a cured man, do I? But you are. Would Dr. Martin let you fly if you weren't? I suppose not. Of course he wouldn't. If you weren't well, he'd never let you go home. It's as simple as that. Make it sound simple, anyway. It is, Bob. Just that simple. Yeah. Look at me, hogging all the attention. You're the one who must be exhausted. I'm doing great. No lies, remember? Come here. Oh, Bob. I missed your baby all these months. Shh. It's over now. I'm taking you back where you belong. Must have been awful for you, the kids, all the responsibility. None the worse for wear. Everything's intact. Except me. Now, I am not going to let you talk. Excuse me. Yes? It looks like this is a full flight. I'm sorry, but I can't find any open seats. Do you mind terribly? No, no, not at all. We're, we're fine here. Thank you for trying. I'll bring you that drink first chance I get. What would you like? Just water. For you, ma'am? Nothing yet. Very well. What was that? They're closing the door, that's all. Hatch, whatever they call it. Here, let's look at the in-flight magazine. Be sure your seats are in the upright position. Bob? No smoking hmm? in the seat. Oh, oh, right. Here, you, let me get it for you. I, I can do it. I, would you relax? Please note the location of the emergency exits in the center and rear of the plane. Should there be a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen masks will drop down from the overhead console. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and breathe normally. You will find a life jacket under each seat. Place your arms through the holes and adjust the strap. Then pull the cord. Sorry, honey, I, I found a newspaper under the seat. The light must be bothering you. No, oh, I should stay awake. No, 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 I don't want you to, sweetheart. Go to sleep now. Can't you sleep? I, I will. Promise. You worry too much. I can't help it. You shouldn't. Not anymore. Bob, do you... Do I what? Are you comfortable talking about it? That night, I mean. What do you want to know? Well, Dr. Martin went over it, but I still don't understand. Well, neither do I, exactly, but I I have a, a pretty good idea what caused it now. You do? Well, it's no great mystery. Overwork, nervous tension, a touch of blood pressure. But why that night on that particular plane? What set it off? I guess it was a lot of little things come together. Lack of sleep, fast food, years of being uptight... Oh, honey, you should have told me. I didn't know myself. I was holding everything in for the sake of the job, trying to think about nothing but facts and figures. There are other jobs. That's just it. There's nothing wrong with my job. I, I like it. Then why? Call it the perfect storm. When I wasn't working or home with you and the kids, I didn't know how to take it easy. So my imagination went on overtime. I looked out the window and I thought I saw... A, don't know what clouds that look like snow fields then someone skiing on that snow can you believe it i just plain couldn't tell the difference anymore it was a wake-up call all right in more ways than one thank god it's over and we're going home oh bob bob could you move your legs to the side what oh just just for a second i have to get out let me call the stewardess she'll bring whatever i have to go to the restroom ruth it's no big deal oh. i'll be right back promise. Yes? 
Would you return to your seat, please? We've hit some turbulence. <laughs> Just a moment. I wouldn't know it. Okay, let's see how bad it is. Sir, please, I have to ask you... Did you see that? You'll have to sit down and fasten your seatbelt. Don't alarm the others, but look outside. Return to your seat first and... Look out the window. Anyone here, lean down and tell me what you see. That man, what's he saying? I can't hear. He looks crazy. Too much to drink. They shouldn't serve him. If you don't sit down, I'll have to call the captain. For the love of God, woman, look! I know it's impossible, but... You don't see a man, but no, a creature of some kind out there on the wing of the plane. You saw what? Out there, on the wing. See for yourself. Sir, I assure you. Open the curtain! What is it I'm supposed to see? There, in the lightning. He... Where? But he was there. I, I, I tell you, he he he, he fl floated down and, and landed on the wing. That's enough. Then he started walking toward the engine. Shh. There are children on board. I'm simply telling you what I saw. I need some help, Nancy. Would you show Mr. Wilson back to his seat? Certainly. I don't mean to upset anyone, but... This way, sir. All right. All, all right. I'm, I'm sorry. It... it it must have been a reflection. Yes, it must have been. If you'll just come with me. I, I made a mistake. I'm, I'm going to my seat now. See? Now, sir. I didn't mean any harm, I, I tell you. Is something wrong, stewardess? A low-pressure pocket, that's all. The plane feels like it's dropping. Nothing to worry about. We'll be through it in a minute. Don't wake my wife. You can move around the cabin again as soon as the overhead light goes off. Yes, of course. For now, I suggest you get some rest and stay in your seat. I understand. Hi. What is it? Would you like another pillow, Mrs. Wilson? No, I don't think so. A blanket? How about some of those peanuts and uh, another glass of water? Surely, I'll be right back. Did something happen? It started to rain. Is that what it was? I just uh, saw something. That's all. Everybody has to stay in their seats for a while. What did you see? Nothing. You must have seen something. I, I happened to look outside just as the lightning flashed, and for a second I thought I saw something. Like what? Shadow. A shadow? In the shape of a man. Where? On the wing. Not a man. Exactly. What are you saying? A, a creature standing upright with long hair on its body and an animal face. Of course you know. That's all it was. A shadow. Of course. People don't walk around on the wings of airplanes. No, they don't. Not while they're moving hundreds of miles an hour. That would be impossible. Wouldn't it, Bob? It must have been a trick of the light. Like your imaginary skier. What? On the snow-capped clouds six months ago? The one you told me about? Yes, yes, I suppose so. And you know that wasn't real. No, it, it was a hallucination of some sort. You must be more tired than you thought. But um, I, I wasn't hallucinating just now. Then what would you call it? It was more the lines of uh, an optical illusion, my eyes playing tricks on me. Then don't look outside. Leave the curtain closed. Believe me, I intend to. You ought to get some sleep. So you'll be rested when we land. I agree. Need another pill? Ruth, I'm all right, I, I tell you. Couldn't hurt. If you say so. Where's my purse? Your water and some extra peanuts. Thank you, stewardess. 
You're welcome. Pop, put the tray down for him. Sure. Are we moving into a store? Not a big one. It's almost past. Oh, well, that's good. If I can get you anything else. We'll let you know. Here's your pill. Thanks. No, thank you. I'm not thirsty. I'm, so, I'm sorry I woke you. Don't be silly. You can go back to sleep now if you like. If you do. G give me a minute. You're not worried about anything, are you? Not in the least. Then put your seat back. In a sec. Just, just let me collect my thoughts. Well, don't overthink it. That never did any good. No, it didn't. You're here with me and we're going home together that's the most fantastic part of all well you'd better get used to the idea all better now yes nudge me if you need me and whatever you do don't open the curtain Consumption right on target. Storm's moving to starboard. We should miss the worst of it. Need a break? No. No, but I, I could use some coffee. Ah, right on cue. Yes? I made some fresh coffee. <laughs> you read my mind, Joni. Mm, one cream and sugar, one black. Put it next to the console, will you? Mm. Hit a little bump back there, huh? Sorry. Tried to go over it, but... Yeah, it should be smoother from here on. Oh, I'm not worried. We're in good hands. Everybody sleep through it? Almost everybody. One crying kid and one slightly uptight passenger. Ah, the old lady. Oh, no. Mr. Wilson, 13A. What? What did he do? Didn't want to come out of the bathroom. Said he saw something. Where? Outside the plane when the lightning flashed. <laughs> Your wings moving, routine. <laughs> Tell him it's supposed to move. If it doesn't, it'll snap off. Oh, you're going to love this. He said he saw a man on it. Oh, don't tell me. Uh, an alien, you know, big head, round eyes, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> tell him he'll take a description for the captain's log. Uh, listen, was he wearing a space suit? Oh, or was the clown shoe? Mm, it says he came down out of the sky and took a walk on the wing, just like that. Ah, yeah, a floater. I see him once in a while when I have too much to drink. Yeah. Or maybe a gremlin. A what? Haven't you heard of gremlins? Mm, must be before my time. Yeah, it started back in World War II. Whenever something went wrong, the mechanics would chalk it up to gremlins. Better than admitting they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Wilson's okay now, but you should have seen his eyes. He looks scared out of his mind. For a minute there, I thought we had a nutcase on our hands. We'll cut off his drinks. Well, that's just it. He hasn't had a drop. Where's in-flight security? Uh, 32B. Well, tell him to keep an eye open. I'd like to run a tight ship. Yes, sir. But I don't think it'll be necessary. The wife gave him a sleeping pill. Thank heaven for pharmaceuticals. <laughs> you fellas want some chow? We've got filet mignon in first class. No, thanks. You and Nancy relax for a while. Aye, aye, Captain. Listen, I can take over if you want to stretch your legs. You sure? Yeah, storm's thinning out, just some more rain clouds. Well, maybe for a minute. Yeah, probably our friendly neighborhood gremlin dropping in for a wee walk. Bob? Hmm? Well, there you are. Go to sleep, darling. Right. I want to sleep. But I can't. She doesn't believe me. None of them believe me. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. Why should I? It's impossible. And I'm not dreaming. I'm wide awake and I'm cured. The doctor said so. No more panic attacks. But I saw it, didn't I? I was out there on the wing walking toward the engine. But why? There it is now. I can hear it. What's it doing? It wants to destroy this plane. Bring us all down. Be because of me, because I've seen it before, or 
maybe it is all in my mind. How can I be sure? There's only one way, God. Help me, I've got to look, I've got to. Time to be brave. Face it down. And if there's nothing out there, then that's that. This is the only way. Here goes. It's simple. I put my hand out. I pull the curtain aside and I'll know. He'll either be there on the other side of the window looking in or there'll be nothing but the darkness. One way or the other, I will put my hand out. Do it. Do it. It's nothing to worry about. If you'll just try to relax, we'll be landing in a couple of hours. There was again. Like some kind of ape dropping down from a tree. What's he doing? No! He's peeling back the engine cover. What are you looking at? Ruth, Ruth, thank God. Let lean across me. Look out the window. Uh, does the storm bother? No. Just like that, it's gone. For some reason, it doesn't want anyone else to see, only me. It's playing a game, taunting me, daring me to stop it. Then what? Remember what I said before about seeing something outside? I, I know what you're going to say, but listen to me very carefully. <sighs> Honey, there's a, a man out there. Bob! Keep your voice down. Have you ever known me to lie to you? No. It, it's, it's not a human being. It's some kind of... I'm not imagining it this time. I'm not. He's out there. Where? What? No, 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 look. He isn't there now. He, he jumps away before anyone can see him. Except me. I don't know what to say to you. I, I, I realize what this sounds like, but... Give me the benefit of the doubt. Do I look insane to you? I didn't say that, but Bob... I, no, I had a breakdown, and I know how it looks to you now, as if the same thing's happening again, but it, it isn't. I didn't want to upset you. No, I want you to tell me. I didn't tell you before, because I, I wasn't sure if it was real. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure now there is a man out there, or a, a creature of, of some kind. If, if I describe him to you, oh, you'd really think I was gone. Honey, no. No, it's all right. It's all right, sweetie. Don't stroke my hand like a child. I know your intentions are good. I, I know you love me, but don't patronize me, Ruth. I, I'm not insane. Did I say... Does it have to be said? For the last time, that... That creature's out there. And the reason I'm telling you now is that he's starting to tamper with one of the engines. It's not just my life at stake. It's everyone on this plane. Shh. Think anything you want. Think that I belong in a straitjacket if it makes you feel any better. If it makes me feel better. I'm sorry. What, what I mean is whatever you think about me that I've lost my mind, all I'm asking you to do is... Tell someone. Talk to the pilot now. He's back there with the stewardess. Tell him to check the wing. If they don't see anything, fine. I'll commit myself. But if they do, there's still time. They can make a forced landing before something terrible happens. Won't you even allow the possibility? All right. I'll tell you. I know it seems a lot to ask. It's 
as if you're announcing that you're married to a lunatic, but... I said, I'll tell them. If that's what you want, I'll stay here. She doesn't believe me. But that doesn't matter. If she can get them to see it, then I'm not too late. Arians, hurry, hurry, Ruth, hurry! Look, look! What's wrong with that man? I don't know. Tell him to sit down. I'm trying to sleep. Quickly! What's going on? He's pulled up one of the cowling plates. He? Didn't my wife... Take your seat, please. There's a man outside. He just... Mr. Wilson, keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on here. Will you look? Mr. Wilson, I'm warning you. All right. I'm sitting. But will you look out the window? See for yourself. Take my wife's seat. What am I looking for? The plate. The hood over the engine with all the wiring underneath. He's bent it up so it's exposed. If you don't do something, there's going to be a short circuit, maybe a, an electrical fire. Well, there's nothing exposed now. What? Wait, wait a minute. I, I, I saw him pull that plate up. There were sparks and lights and... Then he must have bent it back the way it was. Listen, I saw it. I saw it. Mr. Wilson, please. I believe you. But there are other people on board, and we mustn't alarm them. You, you mean you've seen him? Of course we have. But we don't want to frighten the passengers. You can understand that. Naturally, I, I only want to... We thought we'd taken care of the problem. But if he's back, well, we'll do a thorough check as soon as we're on the ground. But if we wait that long... You see the man on the aisle? He's a special investigator from the FAA. We have one on every flight now. And he's armed. If anyone tries to do something to the plane... He can handle it. Oh. That's his job. He knows what he's doing. I understand. I've asked him to change seats with your wife. If you see anything else suspicious, tell him. Then, when we land... You can stop the act now. Bob, they want me to sit up there for a while. Honey, this way, Mrs. Wilson. Everything okay, Captain? Yes, fine. If you'll just stay with Mr. Wilson till we land... Got it. I don't need his help. No problem. Just, uh, let me squeeze in here. Stop humoring me. Mr. Wilson, I assure you, it's under control. Nothing to worry about now. If that's the way you want it, I won't say another word. I'll see us crash first. He's at it again. He the plane putting his horrible, misshapen fingers into the wires. Did you feel that? Feel what? Nothing. Well, go ahead. I'll put it in my report. I just thought we changed altitude for a moment. Pilot must have made an adjustment. But to stay above the storm. Yes, that must be it. I wonder if I can get some information from you. About what? May I see your ID? You have your wallet, don't you? Of course I do. Why wouldn't I? Here, here. Robert Jeffrey Wilson. Never been arrested? Never. Why, why do you ask? Oh, just for the record. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm sure you are kind of gun do you carry? Pardon? The pilot said you were armed. Oh, uh, standard issue 38. Never had to use it, though. Strictly a last resort. I thought guns weren't allowed on board. Well, they're not for the passengers. But with security so tight now, well, we don't like to advertise it. Then you should keep your coat button. I can see the holster. Bob, how are you feeling? Great. How about you? I brought you some water and another pill so you can sleep the rest of the way. That sounds fine. Go ahead, Mr. Wilson. Take it. Why not? I hope you're doing okay now, honey. Couldn't be better. I'll be just a few rows up if you need me. I don't need anything, Ruth. Get some rest. You too. I love you, you know. Same here. It won't be long now. For what? Until we sit down. You're lucky, am I? You get to sleep through it. Let them think that. I didn't swallow the pill. How could I? What's going on out there? Somebody has to do something and we're all doomed. Another minute and he'll have the entire engine exposed. All I can see is the glow of the engine and that creature. I have to act now. Hey, what are you doing? 
Somebody's got to stop that thing. That's the emergency exit. Take your hand off. Leave me alone. You'll depressurize the whole cabin. Got to stop that thing. Don't push the door open. Don't. Lift the gurney down. Yeah, I got it. Here come the paramedics. Oh, good. What do we have here? A guy tried to open the safety hatch. Keep him strapped down. He's out of his tree. We'll take it from here. Turn him over to the feds. He's got a string of charges. does. Okay, you grease monkeys, give this plane the once over. Yes, sir. Now, what about the emergency door? Get up on the wing and replace the seal. Then do a pressure test. You got it. Nuttiest way I ever heard of trying to commit suicide. Yeah, it takes all kinds. Well, when you look at that, what happened? I don't know, but something sure did a job on engine number two. Whole cover plate's bent back. What do you think could have bent it back like that? Beats me. Yeah, let's go to work. The flight of Mr. Robert Wilson is over now. A flight not only from point A to point B, but from the fear of madness to sanity. Mr. Wilson has that fear no longer, though for the moment he may be quite alone in his conviction. Happily, that conviction will not remain private much longer. For this time, tangible evidence has been left behind, even from so intangible a region as the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone continues in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight... All right. All right, guys. Let me put this last little star on here. And that's all that's left is just some of these little minor details. Like these little, I'll show you. Let me get it. Get it adjusted here. Come over a little bit more. There we go. That's basically all that's left. It's just, just little things like those little stars. on the wings so I'll do that off camera because there's quite a few of those but overall guys um, 
she's done. It is done. Like I said, I'll get those little stars put on the rest of the airplanes and all that. And this is a wrap on the USS Ronald Reagan. And it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. Enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be doing another one. I've got to kind of blend a little bit of this here. I'll have to get some dark gray and kind of blend this in. But uh, And I've got to kind of get some highlights on my little tracks. Like where the airplanes take off the rubber tire marks. We'll have to kind of get, put a little dark gray on the side a little bit. Just to give us some contrast. I love how the 76 came out on the nose. And all the striping went good. And only bad thing is, is as soon as one of the grandbabies touch it or anything, these are going to come up. Uh, they did not want to stick to this paint that I used for the upper deck. So, And it is also an old model. So... It's hard telling, you know, how long those uh, decals have set inside that box. But, alrighty guys. Like I said, that's a wrap on the U.S. Ronald Reagan. The next model we're going to do, guys, is this 1904. That's the one. Um... I'm gonna have to look get uh look it up actually because I don't I know nothing about it. But yeah, like I was saying, I don't know anything about that car. But um we'll kinda open it up. I got a really good buy on it. And I think it's gonna be a really fun model to build. But it's all white. So every bit of it's gonna have to be painted. It's even got a little, little man that sits in there. How odd's that? But I think it'll be a fun little model for us to put together. But uh, like I said, everything's going to have to be painted. It's just all, all white. I don't think it has any decals, or if it did, they're not here no longer. Um, trying to see how old this model is. I bought it at the flea market. Um, 1975. So it's an old model. Uh, Mills Fun Group. So it's going to be a fun one. So. Don't go too far guys. Because we got another one coming up. I say we could probably build this one. In a week. And. I like to get to that. The Captain Kid. Sometime this winter. If we can. I don't know. Sure is neat. I love those guns. But we still have a few more months of cold weather. So I guess we'll probably... We'll knock this one out. Like I said, it won't take long. And then we'll start that Captain Kid. I think. And that's what I want to do. Alrighty, guys. I'm just talking out of my head now. So. Until next time. I'll see you. Right here, Redneck Ways. Bye, guys.